Hey you guys, today I want to give you a little tour and show you what's new in the Xtool Creative Space version 2. Now this version is not out yet, but Xtool sent me their beta version, so I got to try it and play with it for the last uh, two weeks. So and now I want to show you what's new. I think you will absolutely love it. There are so many uh, useful new tools in the new version. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. Now the first update I want to show you is the multi-device management. And I'm gonna I'm recording my screen so you can see exactly what I'm seeing. This is the beta version, completely redesigned. Everything gets moved around and stuff. But right now at the top of our screen, you can see if I click on this drop down menu, I have two lasers right now and I can connect both of them. Oh, it is connected. So you can see I have my uh, Xtool F1, it's connected and I also have the S1 connected. Now I have them both through the cable. I don't use Wi-Fi. But as you can see, I have two lasers connected and that means I can run both of these lasers on the same exact time running through my Xtool Creative Space. That is a huge time management. Sometimes I will have my S1 working on a large project and then I need to do something really quick and I need the laser, but for a small job, I need to run my F1. So right now I can use both of them, which is a huge, huge time saving. Uh, I absolutely love this new feature. I can create as many canvases or windows as I would like. And for each one, I can assign a different laser. For example, you can see here this window, this project over here, it's connected to work with the F1. This one over here, it's, co uh, it's connected to work with my S1 40 watts. And I can create a new project over here and then I can choose which laser I want to work with. Right now, F1 is connected for this one, but I can click on the connect device and then S1 will pop in there and I can just choose that and switch it. And now for this particular window, I will work with my S1. Super, super cool feature. I really like this and I am very happy that now you are able to do this. For the rest of the feature, we're going to move to my workbench and uh, because I'm going to do some engraving and show you some things that are new now into the software. And I don't want to use the S1 because the S1, when it's connected to my um, um, air pump to, you know, take the smoke out of the shop, it's very, very loud. So I'll be using the F1, even though I won't have the, uh, the smoke extractor attached or anything, it's going to make a little bit of smoke but that's okay, and it's a lot faster and quieter, so that's why I will be working on that one at my bench. So let's move to the bench, and I'll show you the rest of the features. There we are at my workbench, and we are relocated. If you're wondering, this is what I've been working on today, making this with my S1. These are going to be the lids of a couple of boxes. Really, really cute design, really easy to make. The S1 makes easy job of cutting veneer and then gluing it to a piece of plywood. If you're interested in this design, I will put the link in the description below. Now back to our exciting stuff. Now the biggest and the most useful uh, update is the Easy Set Library. We don't have to test materials anymore. We don't have to waste materials anymore. No more test grids. Xtool did all this heavy work for us. They had 21 people over the last six months testing 300 materials on 14 machines. And they come up with all these test grids and all these results. And they put them all onto their database. And now we can access it and see their results for our material. And we can choose which one we want to go with for our project. So how will this work? Well, I have this little hummingbird over here. Let's say I want to engrave it. I will engrave it on a piece of plywood. This is just a three millimeter plywood. I'm going to put it here onto my machine. Now the plywood sticks out from the machine so I can't completely close the lid. So I'll have to wear my goggles just to be safe. And then over here, you see F1 is connected for this job. And we have over onto the processing um, tab, we have user defined materials. And now there are tons and tons of materials here that we can choose from. Now, if you so happen to don't see your material over there, you can click on this more. And once you click on that, then we have a lot more materials over here. 
and we can filter them by the machine. So if you have the D1 Pro, whatever watts, you can choose it from over here. I'm working with the F1, so I have the choice between the two watt infrared or the 10 watt diode. So I would choose the 10 watt and I'll click apply. And now this is the materials that they tested for the 10 watt. And let's see if we can find the plywood. Um, you can also search it here onto the tab. You can see they have many, many, many plywoods. They have cherry plywood, birch plywood, ash plywood. So many different materials that they test. I'm just going to go with, I don't even know. Let's see if we can find basswood. There you go, basswood plywood. Three millimeters, so I'm going to choose that one. And now we can see that machine, we have the F1, 10 watts laser. It's a blue diode laser. We have it on score, I can put it on engrave. And they are suggesting to do power 35, speed 110. And I can say open an extra creative space. And now that we open it in the uh, extra creative space, you can see it says three millimeter bass plywood over here. So now if I click on my design and I go into object, once you click on it, you see it switches. We, I was on processing. And then when I click my design, it goes to object. Now we have the settings here. We have reference or user define. Reference is the one that we reference from the X tool. So I'm just going to choose that. And you can see the predefined power 35 speed 110. It's already there. You can click on easy panel and you can see it. That it's already plugged in. So I don't have to do anything. It's right there. So let's try it, see what kind of results we get. I am going to frame my design and there it is. Let me see if I can bring you closer so you can see this machine in action. It's super impressive, it is so fast. So right now it's framing. I'm going to stop the framing. Uh, maybe I should make the design just a little bit smaller just because I do not have um, any way to remove smoke right now. It's going to be smoking right here in the shop. And then I'm just going to go to process and click start and push the button to start. This is in real time. I'm not speeding it up or anything. There you go. Engraving is done. And here is our result. Now, I would personally increase the power on that. It looks fine, but I like usually to have a little bit more indent there. So let's try that again and increase the power. All right, let's try this again. This is the fastest laser I have ever taste, tested. It is amazing, super, super fast. Really cool laser. I'll leave a link in the description below if you're interested. And that's it. Hummingbird, it's engraved. You can see a lot darker. Now, as you saw in this little example, the settings that they recommended, they were great. They were not bad, but those should not be set in stone. Those are guidelines. Those are for you so you don't have to do those test grids. Those are for you to know where to start. Um, I wouldn't just go and pick whatever material they chose and work with that. I would actually test it. And if you need to increase or decrease the power, work from there. So, but I think the library, that's one question that I have the most. People always ask me, what settings did you use for that? What setting did you use for that? Well, it's different from machine to machine. It's different from whatever wood you're using and the materials and so on. 
So I think this easy set library, it's going to save people a lot of time, a lot of headache, and it's gonna make it so much more user friendly. So a lot of people get, you know, discouraged that they can't get the right settings. They're burning through material, they're starting fires. Well, now no more need of that. You can have a good guideline and then go from there. Now, another upgrade that this software has is the auto planning, the smart path planning. And you'll find it here under processing and you can see you have auto planning or user define. If you keep yours on auto planning, what is happening now is the software detects which path will be the shortest path, which path will be the fastest path to cut or engrave an item. So previously, you would, if you would watch your laser while it was engraving, you will see it just goes left, right, left, right, left, right, a straight line, and that's how it fills the picture that you are engraving. Well, now it has this technology where it just finds which way is the shortest path or the fastest path. So if you watch your laser, you will see it does groups. So it will engrave a part in here, a part in here, then goes over here. And to uh, and some designs with the um, F1, they increase the speed of the engraving now up to three times. And on the other x machines, up to two times, so just by having that smart path. Now, another big update, it's nodes editing. Now you can edit your designs straight into the Xtool creative space. You don't have to take your designs into uh, Lightburn or Inkscape. So how will that look? Now to get to node editing, there is a little secret. So let me show you. And this design here that I have of this cat, if I just click on it, I do not see node editing. I can have this shape combining things that I can use to edit my image, but nowhere I see node editing. And that's because my image is grouped. You have to right click on the image and ungroup it. Once you ungroup it, now you can edit the image. So I'll click on this part over here. Let's say we want to delete some nodes or edit the tail of the kitty cat. Now we have edit nodes. So you click on that and now we have all these points of this shape and now if I zoom in, let's say I want to make the tail shorter. I can delete that node. I can move this one. Whoops. I can move it maybe over there. I can angle it a little bit. And there you go. We modify the kitty cat's tail. Now let's say we want to modify this ear. I will click on it and then we can go to edit nodes. And here you can have different node times types if you want it to be sharp corners, if you want it to be symmetrical, more rounded and so on. So as you can see, now we can alter this image with um, these nodes. You can delete nodes, you can add back nodes, and this is how you edit your images. Really, really cool. Now let me show you some other things that you can do to edit your file. I have this PNG image over here and let's say I want to trace it and make it into an SVG. Well, now we have, when you click on your image, now we have edit image and here is where you can, you know, delete things on it, crop it, so on. I'm not going to mess with any of that. But now we have, you have the adjustments where you can add contrast and so on. You have filters, but you also have trace image. So if I click on trace image, now you can see we have this blue outline and you can, you know, mess with the fuzziness, the noise and smoothness and so on to get the perfect tracing. And then when you click save, now our image is saved, it's traced. So I can delete the PNG and now we are left with a vector file that, you know, we can cut, we can engrave to whatever we need to do. So let's change it to engrave. There you go. So we are able to trace an image and you can do that with JPEGs, use silhouettes and so on. Now, the last update I want to talk to you about is the snapshot preview for Xtool S1. Now, this is not the S have it over there. But basically what this is, I have not tried it yet, but is for batch engraving. And the way it works, when I watch Xtool demonstrate the way it works, is you can set up a whole batch of, let's say, coasters, pens, whatever you want to engrave. You set them up on the bed of the machine, and then you can take a picture with your phone and then send it to the machine, to the Xtool creative space, and then whatever engraving you want to put, the, the software puts it intelligently on each one of the coasters or the pens or whatever. 
Now, I have not tried this because when I saw them demonstrated, they were using these little round stickers that you have to put four of them in the corners of your bed. And that's the way the machine reads where the items are placed from the picture. I do not have that tape and I don't really do batch engraving, so I was not so interested on in trying to figure out how it works. But that's another thing that it will come out. Now, when I watch Xtool demonstrate this whole new software, they keep referring to it, which I thought was funny, saying, they were saying, this is the better version, not the best version. And that is because they are still working on it. They will try to make it be better. They will probably come up with new things. I don't know, but they keep saying this is the better version, not the best version. They're still working on the best version. Nonetheless, I think the updates are fantastic. Um, I have very, very happy with the library, with um, the fact that now we can trace and edit notes and edit our designs straight into creative space. And um, I hope this was helpful to you and you learned something new. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Skylar Ewing and I'll see you in my next video.